Joe here from H145 Rotor Sims. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you remember, I released a video in the past where I was doing a startup procedure and a real H145 pilot actually called me out and said, hey, your battery master switch, no go, man. Not operating the right way. That's since been fixed. And if you want to check out a video of all those switches being swapped out and all of them and how their operation actually works, go ahead and check out that video after you're done watching this one. So without further ado, let's get moving on this new startup procedure video. Okay, let's begin the startup procedure with the new overhead. So we're gonna move the battery master switch to the center position and push forward and hold, release to center. I'm gonna turn on the overhead lights just for now so we can see a little better. Our fire warning test switch, we're gonna move this to the EXT position for number one and we should see Firebot 1 and 2 use come up on the message center, which it does. Let's go ahead and move this switch to the extinguishing warning. Fire. Engine one fire. And we do have the audible tone. We see engine one fire showing up on the warning panel. And fire about one and two tests. So let's go ahead and move this to the off position and repeat this procedure for fire test number two. Fire about one and two used. Audible tone, fire coming up on the warning panel, back to the off position. Next we're going to move the lamp switch to the lamp position. And we have low fuel, we have BAT, engine 1, rotor RPM main, gear box, oil pressure, engine 2, AP, low fuel, and cargo smoke is what we're looking for. Also down on the APC, we should have all lights on and throughout the rest of the cockpit. Next, we're going to check our battery voltage. So we're gonna hit the number button here and we can see we are greater than 23.5. And then our weight sub format, we need to go through here and adjust our weight. So it is just me today. Validate. Previous. Now in our message center, we should see engine one and two fail, which we do. We should have aft and forward fuel pump, which we do. Also our power up test okay, that is all set. So wait for alignment on barrel as required. So for the barrel, for now, I am just gonna go ahead and toggle on the barrel and go to standard. I'll do the same thing here. And then for the co-pilot MFD, I'll get that on and we'll take care of that as well. Over to the Barrow. Standard, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn off the Barrows here. Exit lights anti-collision up here on the overhead panel. We're gonna move that to the on position. Next, we're going to turn on our fuel pump one and two. And we should see this show up in our message center, which we see fuel one and fuel two prime pump on. Now we're going to move to engine one idle. So 60% N1, we should see the start extinguish, and we are waiting for idle. And there it is. Okay, now let's go ahead and move engine two to idle. And again, we are watching our torque, we're watching our TOT and also our N1. We see that our engine oil has climbed and we should see our main gearbox oil also go up.
down in the message center we can see we have startup test okay perfect now we're going to test the hydraulic switch so this is momentary forward and back on my uh, particular overhead so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to move this switch to the system one and i have to hold it and what's going to happen is is that we are going to see the hydraulic pressure drop here We also see low pressure, hydraulic two. And then normally here, we would be checking our forces. Now we're gonna go back to the off position. I'm going to let this hydraulic stabilize. And then we'll repeat the procedure for system number two. Okay, it is stable. Let's go to system number two. We should be looking for on the message center. We should see hydraulic one low pressure and hydraulic one TR shutoff, which we have. And we're waiting for this to go down all the way. There's zero, and then we would be checking our hydraulic our forces. We're going to move this back to the off position. Next, we're going to move to the after engine start procedure. We're going to turn on the static heating on both pilot and co-pilot. Next, we're going to turn on our avionics master one and two. We're then going to turn our standby battery to on and our LABCS will switch over to PIL, which it's already there. Next, we're gonna move our fuel prime pump switch to the off position and number two, and we're gonna turn on our transfer pumps. Next, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our position light, strobes, and landing. We're gonna move our emergency exits to the arm position. And if you're using the HEMS variant, you can go ahead and arm your cargo hook or hoist. Uh, you can test your cable here, or you can move it to your emergency floats. I'm gonna move the emergency floats to the arm position. Our IBF one and two, we are gonna move these to the normal position. Now on my collective, I am looking at my landing light and search light here in my message center. So I just moved it over to landing light only. Next, our collective lever is in the full down position and we're going to move the test switch for the lamp to the lamp position. Checking our lights once again. Now let's go ahead and move over to pre-flight and we're gonna hold this switch. So it says in the message center, P-flight test. We're looking for P-flight test okay. And there it is. I'm gonna release the switch. Next, we're gonna move down to our APC, our autopilot control panel. We're gonna hit the backup button and we should see SAS and SAS and AFCS disconnected. When I hit it again, we can see that these are lit up in red, which is perfect. So let's go ahead and turn our autopilots on, all three. Now we're gonna move our engine one and two switch to the flight control, but you can also, if you have beep trim, this would be the time to check your beep trim. So my cyclic, as you can see, I am moving it and it's on my iPad. I also have my other beep trim on my collective, so I'll check that as well. And all four positions on each flight control is working properly. Let's go ahead and move our engines to the flight. And let's go ahead and gate the switches. And we should also have our lights go ahead and clear in just a moment. We'll wait for the rotor RPM to extinguish after we climb up in power. And that is it. We are good for takeoff at this point. 